welcome to Bird Island. for a spectacle. I mean <laughs> So we've just literally docked on what's known as Zapatia 2, which is the second of the two large islands out here. And no sooner had we walked onto the boardwalk than this juvenile brown booby has literally just landed on the rail next to us. We think probably because there is currently a hurricane, Hurricane Julia, which is hitting Nicaragua, which is just further up the coast from us where we are here in Panama by a couple of countries and it's uh, yeah it's going to put a lot of birds out of place and this one is probably no doubt exhausted from being out in the ocean and trying to fight those winds and so it's just plonked itself down here on this balcony which is fortunate for us means we get to see these wonderful birds up close Incredible beak. Very similar with their eyes as well to the gannets that I was filming not too long back just on the north coast in Scotland. What a beautiful bird. My first time ever seeing a bird up this close. That is, of course, the brown booby that it is. It was a few moments ago just perched out on that little outcrop there of which there is still an osprey sat up there so yeah, not a bad way to start the trip to Zapatia what a beautiful bird so I'm going to let him get some rest and we're going to head off into the island and see what we can see
Now, this is something you don't see every day, or certainly I haven't. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a better example. I remember a fallen yew tree that I filmed in Scotland, uh, not Scotland, uh, Arnside Knot, on the way up to Scotland in the Lake District, where it had fallen over and then sent um, subsequent shoots up, if you like, from the main stem. And the original tree, instead of dying, stayed alive and sent more shoots up, which in turn created this entire canopy of yew which was amazing. Now, this, I'm sorry to say, far out trumps that one, uh, because this is, an, this is an Ori tree, I hope I've said that right, H-O-R-I, and this is the root plate. <clears throat> if you look behind me, <laughs> that's the end of it over there. So let's take a wander, shall we? Now, this tree is obviously blown over because we're in very soft, sandy ground here. The ocean is literally just the other side of these mangroves. You can see the ground around is where the root plate was. It's very damp, very boggy areas. And these trees are all individual trees coming off it, which are supporting the bromeliads and many, many, many other beings. Look at the moss that's covering this log. Trunk, should I say. There's obviously some old branches that have now turned into more of a supporting root structure as they've gone in the ground <laughs> so it's just perfectly level as well absolutely incredible so we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine trees coming off this one Look at that, how that's it's bizarre, the shape of that, how it's just landed and then rooted and sent up another tree on this end when it still comes along here, look. Right the way from there, right the way down here, right to this end. And there is the top that has obviously now rotted off or what was part of one of the old branches. So just phenomenal an entire ecosystem from one tree and these bromeliads are these kind of succulent plants if they like well they're not succulents but they they cling on to the sides of the trees and quite often back there i found one that was on the ground because it had got so big and so heavy that it then couldn't support itself on the vertical stem of a coconut tree and had fallen off and hit the ground but just phenomenal, what a habitat. Wow, I didn't think I'd come across anything like that on this island. Just amazing. Right, let's go see if we can find these caiman. Well, I just wanted to stop here to show you guys one of these bromeliads, which is quite an incredible plant. I've seen a lot of them that have fallen on the ground. And as I said previously, that's due to their own weight and the roots not being able to support them. You can see this one is still hanging on because it's on a horizontal branch. But also, these things are really good for migratory warblers. So this time of year in October, obviously there's a lot of birds passing through here, warblers and all sorts of birds. There's a lot of sort of barn swallows from the States coming right down into Central and South America. Um, and a lot of them will be using these plants which are everywhere. I mean, if you look out there, you can see them on all the coconut trees all the way up. It's just incredible. Um, they're great because they obviously hold water in the center. So they're a good source of natural drinking water. And also there's loads of little insects and creepy crawlies and things that are in and around these plants which makes them a great habitat for birds to explore insectivores obviously like a lot of the warblers that sort of thing will be hopping in and around these things to uh yeah find a bite to eat and also i wanted to show you this because this is just incredible this 
little beauty. It's called, the, for all you botanists out there, the bulbous air plant or the medusa plant. Well, no guesses as to why <laughs> it's called that. But what an incredible, it's an air plant. So obviously its roots don't actually need to be in the soil. And you can see it's attached itself to the side of this tree here. There's another one over the back here. And there's another clump just over there. So this entire ecosystem living off this one branch of this tree. And you've got these, I think these are bird's nest ferns just on the side, along with the vermiliads. And just, well, I mean, I've certainly never seen a stem of a tree or a trunk of a tree decorated to such profusion. <laughs> it really is incredible. So yeah, I think we are kind of almost entering the other side of the island now. You can see the clearing here where no doubt um, a, a lot of the locals actually, the local indigenous peoples are still uh, permitted to come here, even though this is a national marine park. Um, they're still permitted to come here to use these plantations to collect the coconuts to take back to sell. Obviously, coconut oil is a commodity these days. So it's it's been left for them because this would have been kind of mangroves and forests, just like where we've been walking through. But obviously, a lot of that was cleared to make way for coconut plantations many, many years ago. Uh, so the indigenous peoples are still allowed to come over and collect those. Collect those. Um, so it's nice to see what an incredible backdrop it makes, obviously. So yeah, let's carry on down this track here and see what else we can find. Well guys, I think I've found officially the best logs for dragonfly perches and going around a wildlife pond I've ever seen. I'm not sure how I'll get them through customs and on the plane back to England, but <laughs> what a setting though, look at that. What an incredible colour that ocean is, Caribbean ocean. Hopefully we're gonna try out some snorkeling in a bit so I can bring you guys some GoPro footage of some of the fish and the coral reefs so 
stay tuned. So guys, this is Sugar and he, well, quite fortunately was passing at the right time. This is a brown noddy, which is a gorgeous, gorgeous bird, seabird, but uh, we think again because of the storm that's been brewing and has now headed towards Nicaragua, it's thrown a lot of birds off course and this guy is pretty tired. He's obviously quite comfortable because he's preening, uh, but he's just struggling to get onto this log here. So I'm just going to put him back on top of the log, just out the water, because a bit like the voodoo, we think they were just really tired from um, all the strong winds that have been coming through here overnight. So he's sick. Yeah, he's sick. I see the uh, he's not Yeah. So he's sick. That's how he's moving. Oh yeah. You see? Yeah. You see? Yeah. You see? We have a monk. I think cold. Yeah, cold. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Normally these birds wouldn't let you come this close, so hopefully with a bit of luck he just needs some rest. We're gonna put him back on the log and then he can go about his daily life. And then he put him back. Yeah of course. Well, if you can see from there, guys, the water is a bit choppy for the snorkeling today. So, sorry I haven't been able to bring you that, but do check out the next videos. I have a whole day of snorkeling coming up in some coral reefs, so can't wait to show you that. So right now it's pretty cool. We've got the sky. It's just filling everywhere you look with Montezuma or a pendulas going right over my head. There are dozens and dozens of birds. Okay. <laughs> Look at that. Look at them go. These gorgeous yellow tails. They're all leaving this tree behind me. And they are still going over. They construct like a nest that is almost like a weaver bird's. And it hangs from the trees. Quite incredible. They're like the size of a sort of a jackdaw, if you're familiar with those. Still going over. And the oro means gold and the pendula relates to the pendulous nest that they build. Still going over. Must be 50, 60, 70 birds here. You can still hear them all around us. There's another one coming over. <laughs> Magical. They're all, they all sort of move through this time in the afternoon. You can see them still going over there. And you can hear that. Not so much in the sort of wheel, wheel sort of like the chack, almost a little bit like a jackdaw. But they also do this gorgeous fluty sort of It's a really bad impression, but reminds me of when I was listening to the Golden Orioles over in France. 
think they've just about moved through now. There's one or two probably still in this tree behind me. Wow. <laughs> Never had a flyover from a flock of Montezuma or a Pendulas. The last two just gone, I think. Not only do they have a brilliant name, they are a striking bird with an incredible nest building habit. And the last one's just going over now. Two, <laughs> three. Wow. <laughs> Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that as much as I did. It really was incredible to see so many birds moving through in that lovely sort of fluty, flood, little, little, which is, again, a rubbish impression, but um, really incredible. You can really hear the similar tones in the calls of the golden oriole, if you've ever heard those on the continent in Europe. A magnificent bird in their own right, but these golden or sorry, golden or pendulous, Montezuma or pendulous really are quite something else and wonderful to see them absolutely thriving here in Panama. So while we are here creating this latest wildlife pond and the guys are now moving a few more rocks into position ready for the second layer to go on top of the liner on the far end of the pond when it does fill up with rainwater, which it now does have almost a foot, I'd say there's a good few inches in there, in the bottom of the pond. Um, we were just moving some rocks and look what I found. This unbelievable caterpillar. I'm not sure what it is. I think it's a butterfly. Um, I'm pretty sure it looks certainly like it is a swallowtail of some sort just based on the swallowtails that I've seen in France. Um, just because of the size, the spikes. Um, and yeah, I, I could be completely wrong, but I just thought I would show you guys this incredible caterpillar, which I think is going to pu is on his way to pupate because it was on top of the, one of the rocks, which it just crawled onto overnight. So, and they don't usually leave the host plant until they are ready to pupate, unless they are looking for food. But the size of this thing, <laughs> Although Jim informs me they get a lot bigger over here, not maybe this species, but certainly a lot of the caterpillars get three or four inches, some of them. So a bit like the hawk moss in the UK, if you've seen some of the videos I've done previously on those. So just sort of show you that incredible caterpillar. I'm going to go put him back now on the edge of the rock pile towards the bushes where I think he came from, just in case he's looking for more food. But wow, caterpillars really don't come much cooler than that, do they? Okay, so the guys have been busy sorting out these stones, these large boulders on the back end. And we now have some water. <laughs> it's not much, it's probably maybe eight, 10 inches, but it's something. And um, hopefully we're gonna get some more rain over the next few days. Meanwhile, the guys are going to shortly be starting on this end. We've just been running through exactly how we want the dry stone wall effect to be at this end. We've been picking out some of the stone necessary for finishing and capping this wall off if you like. Uh, before we can let this thing fill up with water, we really need the water to come up to kind of decipher where the exact inlet's going to be over there where Jim is and where the outlet is going to be over on this side as well. So yes, a little bit more stone work to do with these back breaking boulders, but uh, hopefully very, very soon we will be there. And last time, as you can see, we got the cobble beach and everything finished off. So all is looking good. Just need a bit more rain, which I never thought I'd be saying in Panama. Well guys, sadly the time has come for me to leave Jim's tranquil island here at Tranquilo Bay and head off back to the mainland where we have a couple of days to get back to Panama City. But I just thought I'd give you a, an update on this pond. Obviously we haven't had as much <coughs> rainfall as I'd hoped, which is a shame because it would have been nice to get this thing filled up and then we can finish the edges off. We can't really finish the edges because this thing's on a slope. We wanna know exactly what the water level is doing. So this pond needs a little bit more water. And uh, then Jim has been well briefed. He can obviously sort out exactly what the edges are going to do. He can do the final trim of the liner. The guys have been busy putting in the final layer of rocks on the boulder retaining wall on the far end. 
they've got to sort the outflow out which is going out there which they know how to do and then they're going to sort out this channel of water which is going to come in from over here and then it's going to drain into the pond down here into the cobble beach to keep it topped up so i can't wait i'm hoping to come back in a couple of years once this pond is done and we've got another project story for another day which we're looking to undertake in a different part or on a different part of jim's land which will be similar to this but let's just say a little bit bigger so stay tuned guys and obviously if you haven't already do feel free to subscribe to the channel and please subscribe to jim's channel as well tranquilo bay i just think it's an incredible channel there's so much stuff he's got on there and a huge 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 thank you to all the guys that have helped with this maca obi gustavo uh, alvaro the guys have been incredible here and they really have worked very very hard in the temperatures that we've had so i'm yes sad that i can't take a few of them back to england i'm sure they'd be a great help to the team um but it's really been so great working with these guys and i just can't wait to see how this thing's looking in a couple of years time once it's all established yesterday we went out on a, a boat ride up the snyder canal and we did a lot of research about some of the local plants and exactly what Jim could be putting in here in terms of um, aquatic plants. So hopefully that'll be all sorted when I get back as well. So really, really can't wait to see how this thing is looking. But yes, do follow Jim's channel if you haven't already, Tranquilo Bay. There's some amazing stuff. No doubt he'll be posting updates on this pond along with many of the other projects here on site, along with all the incredible wildlife we've seen over the last 10 days it has been amazing to say the least it's just phenomenal the amount of life the amount of biodiversity here and obviously if you want to know more about exactly what i've seen on my travels here in panama then check out the panama playlist it's just amazing it's been well mind-blowing and a life-changing experience it really has i've absolutely enjoyed every single minute of it even being bitten to death having sunburnt feet and sweating profusely every day. It's been thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable and I can highly, highly recommend Tranquilo Bay if you're ever looking to come to Panama. So, thank you so much for watching, guys. Sorry I couldn't bring you the full finished product here, but hopefully you'll get to see that before too long and lots and lots of more content coming up, obviously, of my trip from Panama and also the many ways in which you guys can help wildlife in videos to come. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.